Um, I attended the launch of Dr John Connolly's report this morning in Dublin South Central and I recommend its reading. It's, it makes very interesting reading and would reflect um, a lot of the communities around Ireland where this is a problem. Um, I, I want to say that the bill is um, you know, welcome and we probably, if it gets past the second stage, we probably will add amendments to it. But the fact that children as young as 12 are being included into drug distribution networks is very, very frightening, and it is particularly frightening, frightening for the communities that are affected by it. But the one thing I'd like to focus on for a couple of minutes is the socio-economic aspects in this report, because Dr Connolly illustrates very well that in the higher deprived areas where the rating, the deprivation rating is of E and F, places like Cherry Orchard and Ballyfermot, parts of Crumlin, uh, and parts of the south inner city, there's the highest concentration of the number of children involved in uh, the distribution networks. And as has been said, they're often controlled by some very nasty people who have a lot of power and wield a lot of uh, power to intimidate not just those children, their families, but the entire community. But there was another aspect which he, um, which he discusses in the report, and that is the under-reporting to the Garda Shia Khan themselves from these communities. And a lot of it, when he interviewed people, is down to the uh, disbelief that anything will change, that anything will happen. And I honestly believe that that stems from the idea that these communities feel that they're trapped into a certain level of um, expectations, a certain level of th they can only go so far and nothing will change. They're, if you like, they're contained in those communities and nothing will really change for them. And I have to say that things like the Vincent de Paul report the other morning, which showed uh, 140,000 children uh, living in cold because of fuel poverty, reiterate that message to communities like that. Those 140,000 children are not um, confined to rural areas or old houses. They're scattered throughout this country. And I think it really does illustrate a tale of two countries because right alongside some of the poorest parts of our city in Dublin South Central, there are also some of the most affluent parts. And what has happened during the austerity years, and I would call these the children of austerity, uh, that what happened then was particularly in local areas where drugs projects family resource projects and youth projects were severely cut. I remember it very well when the then Minister for Finance said he had to pick the low-hanging fruit first. And the low-hanging fruit was exactly the facilities and the supports and the employees in those areas which were able to intervene and give, um, if you like, give, give that sort of network of community uh, uh, the veins that tied them together and that meant that, that uh, elements like this were not able to mushroom and grow and influence children who fell outside of the norms, uh, the acceptable norms in society. So I think that the clear message has to be the ones that Dr Connolly uh, spoke about, which is the response to this problem has to be driven in the first place by human rights. And by that he means the human rights of the communities affected, the families and the people who live in those communities and their rights to live a, a peaceful, decent um, and safe life. Um, he also refers to the human rights of the children who are being abused by their handlers abused in, in the sense of, of being abused to, to, to use to peddle drugs, um, and a balance in the care and response to those communities and adopting a restorative approach. Now, if we are to accept those recommendations, then things that are happening currently to drugs projects and to youth service in those areas have to stop. For example, the withdrawal of funding uh, and the withdrawal of the HSE from the drugs community project in the canal communities, one of the worst areas affected, is not acceptable. The HSE needs to engage with those community leaders, those activists and those workers. Otherwise, we are not going to find a restorative and holistic approach you, to how communities affected by this scourge can really uh, grow and develop and be safe.